Many nations are loudly boasting about their pledges to tackle greenhouse gas emissions. Countries including the United Kingdom, France and New Zealand have all legally committed to reach carbon neutrality by 2050, with Sweden committing to 2045 and Norway to just 2030. Carbon neutrality means that a nation absorbs as much CO2 from the atmosphere as they emit from burning fossil fuels and other sources. These are noble ambitions and are desperately needed, but there is one historically isolated country which overwhelmingly outperforms nearly every other nation by not only being carbon neutral, but also carbon negative. This country is the Kingdom of Bhutan. Carbon negative means that this nation is actually a net absorber of CO2. However, they are suffering from the effects of climate change. Watch till the end to find out why. Bhutan is a small country located in the eastern Himalayas, with landscapes ranging from lush subtropical plains in the south to vast mountains in the north. Aside from its natural beauty, Bhutan is also a unique country politically. In the 1970s, the King of Bhutan famously proposed a Gross National Happiness Index as the key metric for its country's success. This led to a holistic philosophical approach to social development, cultural preservation and environmental sustainability. This results in Bhutan often being cited as the happiest country on earth. At the time, the king famously said that the Gross National Happiness Index is more important than gross domestic product, GDP. A vastly different focus to most other countries who use GDP, the measure of economic wealth of a country, as the main indicator of success. Bhutan was previously solely governed by a monarchy, but in 2008, the king imposed a new constitution and it forced a multi-party democracy, with national happiness at the forefront of its decision-making. This was done without pressure from Bhutan citizens, who were already very happy with their monarchy. However, the king saw the benefits of imposing a democratic system and reducing his level of control over the kingdom, even allowing the potential for his own impeachment. But what does the data show about Bhutan? With respect to environmentalism, the constitution states that the nation's forest cover must never fall below 60%, but Bhutan currently exceeds this at 72%. Bhutan's annual carbon footprint is around 2.2 million tonnes, but due to their exceptional forest cover, the country absorbs around 6 million tonnes of emissions per year, nearly three times as much as it emits. All forests are also strongly protected by laws which prohibit poaching, hunting, mining and pollution in these areas. Fixed biological corridors also provide pathways between protected areas of forest to its diverse wildlife. To reduce pollution, the government gives free electricity to all farmers, which mitigates emissions associated with burning firewood. A large amount of this electricity is generated through hydroelectric systems in the dense array of rivers running through the country's landscape. This not only powers the majority of Bhutan, but some is also exported, offsetting a further 6 million tonnes of carbon in neighbouring countries. They also provide significant subsidies on LED lighting and maintain a key partnership with Nissan to promote electric vehicle use. Bhutan has even implemented bans on plastic bags, fast food, smoking, timber exports, hunting and mass tourism. In addition to its government, Bhutan's citizens also act as environmental stewards. In 2016, the Bhutanese celebrated the birth of the new prince by planting 108,000 trees, a simultaneous environmental and religious sentiment as, in Buddhism, trees symbolise long life, health, beauty and compassion. Whilst Bhutan's environmental efforts are extremely impressive, it is a very small nation, with a population of around 750,000. For context, its nearest neighbours, China and India, have populations of around 1.44 and 1.37 billion, and annual emissions of 11 and 2.5 trillion tonnes of carbon respectively, the first and third highest carbon dioxide emissions globally, meaning China emits 500,000 times as much as Bhutan. But in addition to acting as a carbon store, Bhutan is also extremely focused on the health of its freshwater systems. Bhutan is part of the Tibetan Plateau, a massive glacial region covering mainly Tibet in China, but also Bhutan, India and several other countries. The region contains so much fresh water that it is sometimes referred to as a third pole. It feeds at least 10 major river systems across Asia and provides water to 1.3 billion people. But it is not a desire for fresh water which led to Bhutan becoming leaders in sustainable water management. In fact, it is a desire to reduce the volume of fresh water flow into the country. But why is this? Just like the other poles, the Tibetan Plateau is suffering from the effects of climate change. A study using satellite images showed that just over 23% of Bhutan's glaciers were lost from 1980 to 2010. 
Another showed that just a 1 degree Celsius increase in Bhutan's average temperature would result in a further 25% loss to its glaciers. Some of Bhutan's glaciers are receding at up to 76 metres every year, contributing to rising levels in reservoir lakes and increased risk of flooding. On October 7, 1994, a major burst in the Lugasho Glacial Lake resulted in a massive flood, causing damage to homes and farmland as well as the deaths of 21 people. But this should never have happened. The Lugasho Lake didn't even exist until the 1960s, it was previously a glacier, and this event was one of the main drivers for Bhutan's focus on environmental excellence. Bhutan is not a rich country, nor has it chosen to pursue rapid technological development, instead focusing on the happiness of its people. Hence, its ability to predict and recover from natural disasters is limited. Further, highly unpredictable avalanches or earthquakes could cause flooding in the future with little to no warning. However, the world has heard the cries of Bhutan, and the UN, WWF, the Austrian government, and several other wealthy donors have stepped in to help mitigate the impacts of its melting glaciers. So far, the collaborators have installed early flood warning systems and begun to identify which of the country's 983 glaciers and 2,794 glacial lakes are at most risk of flooding. This has enabled Bhutan to begin work on at least 25 safe spillways, which allow excess water to flow safely away from the overburdened lakes and dams. Impressively, due to concerns over access and weight of heavy machinery, these spillways are being built using only manual labour and hand tools. It is a cruel twist of fate that the first carbon negative country should suffer such extreme effects of climate change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, believes this kind of glacial melting has been occurring globally since as far back as 1850. As well as floods, glacial melts contribute to rising sea levels and reduce freshwater availability. But Bhutan is adapting to our changing world and has even utilised glacial melt water to power its vast hydroelectricity programme. The power generated has seen Bhutan become one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, with 8% of GDP and around 40% of exports coming from hydropower. But here's what you can do. Bhutan acts as a shining example for other countries to follow. Their policies allowed the country to maintain its cultural identity, prioritise the happiness of its people and protect their natural environment. Of course Bhutan is a small, low-impact country, however there's no reason other countries cannot adopt more humanitarian and environmental policies. The profit-driven focus we see in the rest of the world is often the reason why other countries are reluctant to change their constitution to something similar to Bhutan's. So use Bhutan and its people as inspiration to campaign for your government's commitment to carbon neutrality, and use sustainability as a key decision maker when voting in your next election. In your own life, acknowledge that small changes to your daily habits could influence others and have a big impact on your country's carbon footprint. Bhutan has shown that the path to carbon neutrality is necessary for our future prosperity, however climate change is a global phenomenon requiring a global effort. Thank you for watching this R Eden video. We hope that you enjoyed it since we certainly enjoyed making it. Please make use of our media and information sources provided in the description when discussing climate change with others. We didn't have time to discuss just how awesome Bhutan is as a country, but there are several really fascinating documentaries on Bhutan freely available on YouTube which we've linked below. Please also share this video, give it a thumbs up and comment any feedback and suggestions for future topics. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our future videos, as well as our other social media. Look after yourselves, each other, and most importantly, the planet around you. Thanks again, R Eden.